Imagine pointing a small backyard telescope toward the night sky, expecting nothing more than a faint smudge of light drifting between the stars, and instead discovering something NASA somehow forgot to mention in their own press conference. Something so bright, so massive, so chemically bizarre that it rewrites what we thought we understood about interstellar visitors. While the world listened to the official narrative, calm, measured, sanitized, an independent astrophotographer named Ray was pulling in raw, unfiltered data from his own equipment. And what he captured wasn't just different from NASA's version. It exposed everything they didn't highlight, didn't emphasize, or simply didn't want to complicate the story with. A 400-fold brightness surge, a color shift that defies comet chemistry, a coma larger than Earth itself, and a Jupiter encounter only a handful of comets in history have ever survived. Tonight, we dive into the secrets that slipped through NASA's fingers and were caught instead by someone standing in his backyard under the glow of a suburban sky. Ray begins his video almost casually, saying NASA missed a lot of stuff in their press conference about 3i Atlas, but the reality behind that understatement is staggering because what he found wasn't minor detail. It was foundation-shaking evidence of an interstellar object behaving in ways that standard comet models can't neatly explain. Ray is not a government lab, not a multi-million dollar observatory. He is one person with a telescope, the night sky, and a knack for catching what others overlook. His tone is humble, but his findings imply something far deeper. Sometimes the biggest discoveries don't come from institutions. They come from individuals who aren't afraid to ask why something doesn't add up. Ray retraces the path of 3i Atlas, calculating that it likely entered the solar system around 2017, silently crossing the outer regions before becoming visible in 2025. This is not just another comet following a predictable orbit shaped by familiar gravitational forces. This is a hyperbolic visitor from another star system, a relic that formed around a completely different sun billions of years ago. By the time it reached perihelion in March, NASA's own satellite, Stereo, captured an event no one emphasized properly, a brightness surge so intense it dwarfed what typical comets ever display. And Ray is the one pointing out that this wasn't given the spotlight it deserved. Here is where Ray's analysis delivers its first major blow to the official narrative because Stereo recorded 3i Atlas becoming 400 times brighter than a typical comet, four times more than even the unusually active C2020F3 SWAN. NASA mentioned it, yes, but in passing, as if this kind of explosion were normal. Ray insists, and rightly so, that this is anything but normal. Most comets brighten as they approach the sun, but they do not behave like cosmic flashbulbs detonating with energy far beyond standard models. This is the kind of anomaly that should anchor a press conference, not hide inside a slide. Ray highlights something NASA glossed over almost entirely. The comet didn't just brighten, it changed color, jumping from red to blue while skipping green altogether. That's not how comet spectroscopy typically behaves. Comets brighten and shift hues gradually, usually passing through predictable intermediate wavelengths. But 3i Atlas behaved like someone flipping channels on cosmic settings we don't fully understand. Ray emphasizes the importance of this because spectral anomalies reveal chemical signatures, and chemical signatures reveal the history of the stellar system where the object was born. NASA's silence on this wasn't malicious, but it certainly wasn't thorough. This red to blue jump isn't just pretty, it indicates a unique chemical composition, possibly containing materials rarely seen in solar system comets. When an object comes from another star system, its chemistry carries fingerprints of the disk of gas and dust that once surrounded its parent sun. A shift this dramatic suggests 3i Atlas isn't just interstellar by trajectory, it's interstellar by molecular identity. The press conference barely mentioned this, but Ray's analysis shows it should have been the headline. After passing its closest approach to the Sun, 3i Atlas moved toward Mars, where NASA released a blurry, low-detail image from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Social media exploded with backlash demanding better photographs, but Ray points out that the real data missing from NASA's presentation wasn't from Mars at all. It was from something far closer and far more revealing. In March 2025, SpaceX launched four satellites called PUNCH, designed to map the solar wind in 3D, 
orbiting just 600 kilometers above Earth. During the Mars 3i Atlas alignment, these satellites captured shockingly detailed images that NASA did not highlight. Ray shows these images, and what they reveal is monumental. The coma of 3i Atlas is around 17,000 kilometers in diameter, larger than Earth itself. This is not a trivial detail. This is the scale of an entire planet wrapped in gas and dust. The punch imagery shows Mars drifting across the field of view while 3i Atlas sits above it as an incredibly bright object. From 600 kilometers above Earth, the satellites captured both worlds in a single frame. Ray explains that if the comet looks this large from Earth orbit, imagine its appearance from Mars. It would dominate the sky like a glowing celestial leviathan. This visual comparison should have been in NASA's press conference, but it wasn't. Ray argues that NASA's failure to emphasize these images wasn't a conspiracy, just a communication failure. A comet bigger than Earth's diameter, captured alongside Mars, is the kind of evidence that transforms public understanding instantly. Yet the images were quietly released after the press conference rather than showcased during it. Ray believes this was a mistake because these visuals could have reframed the entire conversation. Ray stresses that the only way to truly understand the 400 times brightness surge is to contextualize it with scale. This isn't just a bright comet because of chemistry. It's bright because it is huge, one of the largest ever recorded, and it comes from an alien star system. The combination makes it a scientific treasure, a once-in-a-lifetime chance to study the material of another solar system before it disappears forever. Ray explains that this comet's interstellar origin makes it scientifically invaluable. Its materials were formed around a different star, a different disk, a different epoch of planetary formation. Studying its composition is like examining the DNA of another solar system. The public deserved to hear this clearly and repeatedly, yet NASA's presentation undersold the uniqueness of this opportunity. Ray addresses a widespread misconception. Passing through Jupiter's Hill sphere is common. Thousands of comets do it. But passing extremely close to Jupiter itself is rare. So rare that only two or three comets in recorded history have done so and survived. 3i Atlas is headed straight into this danger zone. The gravitational forces are immense, capable of tearing a comet apart or capturing it. This is a critical moment in the comet's journey, yet it was barely mentioned officially. When Ray removes background stars from his captures, he reveals something unexpected. The central region of the coma appears pointed, not round. This structure has shape, directionality, and perhaps rotation. Ray isn't claiming the nucleus is resolved. No telescope on Earth or in orbit can do that with current technology, but the pointed structure is undeniably present. Ray compares his processed images with archived Hubble data, and the pointed structure appears in both. This is remarkable for several reasons. It validates Ray's observations, supports Hubble's original detections, and demonstrates that independent observers with modest telescopes can meaningfully contribute to frontier science. Ray's work is not guesswork, it's data. Ray acknowledges that neither Hubble nor JWST can resolve the true nucleus of the comet. Their mirrors aren't large enough to reveal surface detail. He explains that a 30-meter telescope being built for 2032 will have that power. But by then, 3i Atlas will be long gone, rushing back into interstellar darkness. This emphasizes the urgency. We must study the comet now, using every instrument available. Ray ends by showing how his findings, combined with what NASA released but underplayed, paint a fuller, richer picture of 3i Atlas. Not because NASA is wrong, but because institutional communication often filters out details that independent scientists recognize as essential. His work demonstrates that astronomy is no longer reserved for massive agencies. With dedication, even a backyard observer can catch what the world's most powerful institutions forget to mention. As Ray continues capturing the comet night after night, something subtle yet profound begins to emerge in his data because the closer 3i Atlas gets to Earth, the more pronounced its internal structure becomes through the glow of its coma, almost as if the comet were gradually peeling back its own layers for us to study. 
Ray mentions that what initially looked like a diffuse uniform blur is now showing distinct geometry, with the pointed central region growing sharper and more defined with each observation. This isn't because Ray's equipment is changing, but because the comet's own activity is increasing, ejecting material in ways that emphasize its underlying shape. The spin Ray thinks he's detecting becomes more noticeable as well, suggesting a complex internal rotation that subtly modulates the brightness profile across frames. None of this violates comet physics, but the visibility of these features from a backyard telescope underscores just how active, large, and dynamically structured this interstellar visitor really is. Ray's increasing clarity isn't just aesthetic, it's evidence of a physical evolution playing out in real time as the comet approaches, revealing details that NASA simply didn't communicate with the weight they deserved. Ray emphasizes something remarkable that the scientific community often undervalues, the ability of non-professional astronomers to create meaningful bridges between public observation and space agency data. When Ray compares his pointed core imagery to the Hubble captures, he finds a consistency that validates both sets of data. Even though Hubble is far more powerful, the pointed shape visible in both images suggests a real structural characteristic of the comet rather than an artifact caused by imaging limitations. This is especially interesting because the comet's central region remains unresolvable even for Hubble and JWST, meaning that any shape inferred from the coma is a reflection of how material is escaping from the nucleus. Ray's finding becomes part of a larger scientific conversation. If an independent astrophotographer using modest equipment can detect the same structural cues as one of the world's largest space telescopes, then the comet's activity must be exceptionally pronounced. This strengthens the idea that 3i Atlas is not behaving like a quiet, stable comet, but as a highly dynamic interstellar body undergoing dramatic outgassing events. Ray's work becomes a form of citizen science confirmation, showing that important discoveries are no longer confined to institutional laboratories. Ray turns his attention to what may become one of the most consequential events in the comet's entire journey, the upcoming close encounter with Jupiter. He clarifies a misconception circulating online. Passing through Jupiter's hill sphere is routine, but passing extremely close to Jupiter itself is rare in the extreme. Only two or three comets in recorded history have managed such an encounter and survived intact. Jupiter is not just a gas giant, it is a gravitational titan, a cosmic engine capable of ripping comets apart, altering trajectories violently, or even capturing them. Ray emphasizes that 3i Atlas is heading directly into this gravitational cauldron, making its upcoming trajectory phase not just another milestone but a survival test that could reshape the comet or even end its interstellar voyage. And here is what's striking. NASA did not clearly communicate how rare or dangerous this passage truly is. The public never heard that only a tiny handful of comets have threaded this gravitational needle before. Ray's emphasis transforms what seemed like a routine orbital path into a suspenseful chapter of cosmic dynamics, creating an understanding that this interstellar object may be only weeks or months from its most violent trial. Ray closes his analysis with a sobering reminder. We are observing 3i Atlas at the only moment in human history when such observation is possible. JWST and Hubble, despite their immense capabilities, cannot resolve the nucleus and even the next generation of telescopes, such as the 30-meter ground-based observatory expected around 2032, will arrive too late, long after the comet has left the solar system. This means every data point recorded now, every image processed, every spectrum captured, is part of a shrinking window of opportunity. Ray stresses that although institutional science provides the backbone of astronomical discovery, Independent astronomers play a crucial role in filling observational gaps, challenging communication oversights, and enriching the scientific narrative for the public. His backyard images, showing the pointed core growing clearer as the comet approaches, are not just hobbyist curiosities. They are historical data from a once-in-a-lifetime event involving an interstellar artifact that will never return. Ray's perspective reframes the moment. This isn't merely a scientific opportunity. It's a fleeting encounter with material older than our sun, passing by for a brief hello before vanishing into the darkness once more. And as we reach the end of this journey through forgotten images, overlooked data, and revelations hiding in plain sight, 
one thing becomes impossible to ignore. Sometimes it isn't the massive government observatories or the billion-dollar aerospace programs that show us what truly matters, but the quiet persistence of someone standing alone in their backyard pointing a telescope toward a comet that shouldn't even be here. Ray's findings don't contradict NASA's science. They complete it, because what he uncovered were not conspiracy-level secrets but essential details that somehow slipped through the institutional filter. A 400 times brightness explosion that should have dominated headlines, a spectral shift from red to blue that defies normal comet chemistry, a coma larger than Earth captured next to Mars in images that could have reshaped public understanding instantly, a rare close encounter with Jupiter that only a few comets in history have survived, and a pointed, structured core visible in both Hubble captures and backyard imagery, all telling the story of an interstellar visitor far more extraordinary than the official presentation ever conveyed. And this is the real message Ray brings forward. Science is not weakened when independent voices highlight what institutions overlook. It is strengthened, expanded, made more honest. 3i Atlas is not just another comet drifting through our skies. It is a relic from another star system older than our own sun, a piece of alien geological history passing through our solar neighborhood for a brief, fragile moment before vanishing forever into the dark between stars. Everything we learn now will be all we ever know. So as Ray keeps capturing images, frame by frame, night after night, he reminds us that discovery is no longer the domain of a chosen few. It belongs to everyone with curiosity, patience, and a willingness to look up and notice what others forget to mention. And perhaps that is the greatest lesson of all. In a universe this vast, sometimes the truth isn't hidden from us by design. Sometimes it's simply waiting for someone to pay enough attention to see it.